you're watching Swipe. Coming up on the show this week. What lies beneath? We look at the robot technology delving into the secrets of marine life. I get a close-up look at a wiggling water bot. And we've got quests and perils, tricks and traps in this week's Game Review. Welcome to the UK's south coast. It's always been said the ocean is full of mysteries. And here in Southampton, scientists have been working on pioneering marine technology to try and unravel a few of those. Here's Angela. You happy to deploy? All yours, mate. This robotic vehicle is part of a new project to help discover why certain areas of the marine environment are particularly attractive to predators like whales and dolphins. Last month, working in partnership with the Worldwide Fund for Nature, the National Oceanography Centre based in Southampton deployed this autonomous surface vehicle, nicknamed Thomas, from Milford Haven in Wales, tasked with studying aquatic mammals and seabirds. A submarine glider has also been deployed in the Celtic Sea to help Thomas monitor activity. The area, the Celtic Deep, the area that the robots are heading to, is um, it's quite an interesting one because there's, there's different water masses there and all of that means that it makes it a very productive area. So you get some of these top predators, things like marine mammals, whales and dolphins. So what these robots will be doing is, is collecting uh, continuous data there and that's something that you can only really get through this type of technology. Um, alternatives would be research ships which tend to just take uh, moments of information rather than this sort of long time series through using this type of technology. To capture information the robots are covered in a range of different sensors and cameras. Thomas has marine acoustic monitors on board to pick up any underwater noises of marine mammals communicating. The submarine glider, also known as a slocum, is equipped with sensors capable of measuring the water temperature and acoustic pingers to detect plankton and shoals of fish. Our oceans cover 70% of the Earth's surface and so far we've only explored less than 5% of it. Now here in Southampton, scientists are hoping to discover a lot more with this technology. Thomas is fitted with sensors to provide us with information on the surface of the water column, whereas the underwater slocum gives us information on the water column itself, the physical characteristics and productivity. We then combine this information with the purpose of finding biodiversity hotspots in the ocean. So what we would like to find out is, are there certain areas in the ocean that are particularly diverse, and if so, why? The three-week mission is expected to end later this month, but because the smart vehicle also has the ability to harvest solar and wind energy, it could potentially remain offshore, delving into the depths for answers for several months yet. Angela Barnes, Sky News. Now this is the Marine Robotics Innovation Centre in Southampton, where the vehicles you just saw in Angela's piece there are being developed and operated from. And over here is Stephen Woodward with what looks like a rack of torpedoes. Yeah, they're actually very slow moving vehicles. Really? How slow are they? Probably about the speed of a person walking up or down a flight of stairs. Gosh, quite deceptive, aren't they? And what's, what's in there? So this type of glider, this has a buoyancy engine. It's essentially a bladder which will inflate and deflate with oil that's contained inside. That will give it momentum up and down through the water column. What kind of other factors do you have to consider when you're getting ready to send them out? So the batteries are very important. These gliders can stay out in the ocean for up to six months. So six we take months? yeah really careful care of the batteries. Also we look after the sensors and then we ballast the gliders for different locations. Right, and what's involved in ballasting? So uh, the various oceans where we deploy these gliders have different densities and we need to make the density of the glider match that. Right, how do you do that? We put it in the tank. Can yeah. we have a look at the tank? Of course we can. Ah, so you've got a pink one down here. That's right, this is Scapa. Scapa, so do they all have names? Yeah, they've all got unique names. This glider was named by our colleagues at the Scottish Association of Marine Sciences and they like to name gliders after places in Scotland. Makes sense. And what test is being carried out right now? We're just giving the glider a wiggle. A wiggle? Yeah, so we'll change the pitch and the roll and try and force any air bubbles out. I see, and why is that so important? Well, when we put them in the ocean, that air will be forced out, so we need to get rid of it in the tank for an accurate comparison. Are they pretty robust? Yeah, in general. We've had some problems this year with gliders getting caught in abandoned fishing gear. They get stuck in nets close to the seabed and it's very hard to recover them from there. What about attacks from sharks and whales? Uh, we've not had any incidents though. No? I think there have been a few scrapes in Hawaii and Australia perhaps. Really? From sharks? Uh, yes, though we generally have to worry about just goose barnacles and remoras. Okay, good. Not, not any sharks on the UK coast then attacking these? Not that I'm aware of. 
Well, away from marine robotics, we'll be checking out a few hot new video games releases in just a moment. But first, here's a roundup of some of this week's other tech news. A British FIFA 2015 fan features in the new Guinness World Records Gamers Edition for the longest marathon playing a football video game. Chris Cook played for 48 hours, 49 minutes and 41 seconds to raise money for charity. Other amazing feats in the edition include the world's largest arcade machine, standing at over four metres high. It seems money really can't buy happiness for billionaire Marcus Persson, the man behind the hugely popular video game Minecraft. The 36-year-old has recently been complaining on Twitter about feeling isolated. One post said, The problem with getting everything is you run out of reasons to keep trying and human interaction becomes impossible due to imbalance. Well, forget about humans. Sky News discovered this week that almost half of British people fear robots could one day wipe out humanity. Our survey also suggested that more than six out of ten people in the UK think the government should protect jobs from being taken by robots. And the news you've all been waiting for. A smart device that lets your pet send you a selfie launched on crowdfunding site Indiegogo this week. The makers of PetBot say it's the only product that uses petofficial intelligence to detect, record, share and notify you when your pet is active. Now this is Jura. She's done with her wiggling for the day. And while we get better acquainted down here in the lab, here's Martin Robinson with this week's games review. The first game um, I've selected uh, this week is Metal Gear Solid V, uh, which could well be one of the year's biggest releases. Uh, and, oh, where do I start with this? It's such a phenomenal game. A lot of people have been absolutely bowled over by it. It's one of the greatest games uh, in the Metal Gear Solid series, uh, which goes back some 28 years now. Um, this is Hideo Kojima, the creator's last game on the series, and he's bowing out with real style. Uh, it's the most ambitious game yet. It's like an open-world stealth game where you're um, basically taking on kind of an 80s militia uh, and it's full of kind of quirks you expect from the series. I mean, fundamentally the game's about uh, seeking revenge. If you're like me and you're playing the game, the game's about uh, building an army uh, in order to extract lots of disco tapes and 80s classics uh, from various military camps. It's a wonderful game. I'd be surprised if there's a better game coming out this year. Uh, it's that good um, and what a way to see off that series. Game two um, is Mad Max, um, which you're probably familiar with, a uh, long-running uh, film series which obviously came back to the cinema this year in great style with Fury Road. This is another open-world game. Um, it is uh, an action game again. It's not directly tied to any of the films, but it uses the fiction really, really well. Basically, it's kind of like Assassin's Creed. Uh, you're exploring a massive wasteland, taking down camps and everything. Uh, it's nothing you haven't played before, but what makes it really work is how it takes that fiction, all those kind of parched wastelands, the uh, car combat and the um, kind of fetishism over cars. It takes that and really wraps a really good game around it. So it's, uh, if you're a fan of the films, you're going to be absolutely love it. Game 3 is Armello. Um, it is a digital board game. Um, in recent years, there's been a really big resurgence of interest in board games. I think people are beginning to realise how much fun it is to play with other people in a room. Um, this is a digital board game, so you play online. But it has the kind of things that make board games great. It's got the kind of the scheming, uh, the kind of deep, rich mechanics, and just the, the joy of competing against the friends. It's also got a really cute wrapper. Basically, uh, it's Game of Thrones uh, with animals, um, and I don't know how better to sell <laughs> something than that, basically. Uh, yeah, it's a treat. Final game is Satellite Reigns, uh, which is another game which was kickstarted uh, a while ago. It was kind of funded off the back of its uh, a semi promise to be like Syndicate, which is like a 90s classic, uh, which was a tactical action game. It's similar like that superficially, uh, so you're in charge of a squad of people that goes around a dystopian city, kind of like Blade Runner, and basically it's kind of espionage and hacking and stuff like that. Uh, it is satisfying in its own way, but uh, unfortunately it does have some rough edges, it's a little bit frustrating, so it doesn't quite live up to the promise uh, of its potential, and, and still it's a good fun game, uh, there's not much else like it, so it's worth trying out if, uh, if you're interested in that kind of thing. That's it for this week, so from me and Scapper, goodbye, see you next time. <laughs>